Every trip starts the same, packing your stuff. Then you have to drive some 1150 kilometers, meaning you probably have to spend the night somewhere in Germany. Because of the traffic jams around Munich and Salzburg you may have delays, which can yield total new experiences. So it often takes two days to get to Greifenberg. But once you get there, the party is on. But what is actually going on behind the scenes? What is really happening? You have to get up very early every day. Just to find out it's raining like hell. And flight preparation isn't always as you expect. And when you are dragged up the mountain by one of the female Austrian racing drivers you find yourself surrounded by clouds. Thus the para waiting begins, and no one knows how long that will last. And when the conditions turn in your favor, the landing may impose another challenge, resulting in partial deforestation. To recover from the excitement, some other activities are developed. But it can get even worse. When the weather looks good you will still have to hike quite a bit to get to the highest starting point. And the resulting oxygen depletion can cause particularly strange behavior. And then the instruction team. By Jove, what a bunch of misfits. One cannot imagine what a total fuck-ups they are when they try to create an instruction video for setting up the so-called office. There are even people who pretend to be an instructor. So far about safety. At the end of the day, longing for a good meal, you might get a little extras in your salad. To compensate for all the suffering a do-it-yourself meal is prepared, with a lot of burnt meat and a washing up bowl full of salad. And when the week comes to an end, it is a relief to be able to go home again. The strange thing is, you're already longing for your next week of flying, despite all the torments you've endured. So apparently the experience was not too bad after all. So I'm assuming we'll see you again on the next flying episode, cheers.